lesson 12 of this course industrial waste treatment in the last lecture we talk about manufacturing process and characteristics of wastewater from sugar industry today we will talk about waste management and wastewater treatment okay so the topics which will be covered in this lecture are treatment options for wastewater then various alternative flow sheets for the treatment waste minimization and byproduct recovery okay so first we start with primary treatment and as you are aware the treatment is known as primary treatment because all the treatment given ahead of secondary treatment under this section and the main objective is to make wastewater suitable for secondary or biological treatment. So, primary treatment needed for wastewater from sugar industry is bar screen for removal of large floating material, then grid chamber for removal of suspended solids which can settle under gravity and next is oil and grease removal. Now here only the wastewater which comes from mill house contains oil and grease so it is separated and first treated for removal of oil and grease and after that it is allowed to mix with the wastewater from other processes. So, wastewater from boil house is mixed with wastewater from mill house only after removal of oil and grease from the mill house affluent. All the wastewater is then taken to equalization tank where uniform characteristics is given to waste water and then plain settling is done or if required even coagulation, flocculation and sedimentation is done. So, it depends on the concentration and type of suspended solids, plain settling or chemical treatment of coagulation, flocculation and sedimentation is given. This is the end of primary treatment. The residue or settled slush from primary treatment is then taken for sludge drying bed and the treated wastewater, the supernatant from settling tank is then subjected to secondary treatment or biological treatment. Okay. So, if you remember the wastewater characteristics, the BOD is in the range of 1000 to 2000 uh, milligram per liter which is very high and directly if you go for aerobic treatment then aeration cost is very high. Other side if you look at the industry most of the sugar industries they are located in rural area near the fields of sugar cane. So, the availability of land is not an issue and hence low cost secondary treatment are preferred. First such low cost treatment favorable for wastewater treatment is combination of anaerobic and then aerobic. So, first is upflow anaerobic sludge blanket USB which is then followed by activated sludge process or ASP. The other alternate is lagoon treatment again low cost treatment and in this also combination first anaerobic lagoon or pond followed by aerobic pond is preferred 
during aerobic treatment the domestic waste or sewage is mixed with industrial waste the benefit of this is seeding or microbe required uh, is then added so no cow dung required the sewage will provide microbial culture required for degradation of organic matter the third combination is anaerobic filter followed by activated sludge process so most of the anaerobic and aerobic treatment technology available they are suitable for this wastewater treatment so here you can see treatment flow diagram first option where you can see the millhouse affluent taken to screen oil and grease removal and then the boil house affluent after passing through skin screen that is mixed and then it is further mixed well in equalization tank then pst from pst primary sludge uh, settling tank the wastewater is further treated first anaerobic treatment usb followed by aerobic pond and here you have treated affluent which can be released after disinfection the another option millhouse affluent pass through screen and treated for oil and grease removal and after that it is allowed to mix with boil house affluent taken collectively to equalization tank first treatment is anaerobic lagoon now here remember since it is treated in lagoon so no primary settling treatment is required the anaerobic lagoon itself act as settling tank and then further disintegration of the settled solids okay so no pst or settling treatment if it has to be treated in anaerobic lagoon this is followed by aerobic pond and then after disinfection your wastewater is treated and it can be disposed of so let us focus on waste minimization so for waste minimization following steps can be implemented number one is maximum reuse and recycling of all cooling water and steam condensate after passing through cooling pond and polishing pond as we have seen during water budget the maximum water is required for non process application that is steam generation and cooling so here the steam as well as the moisture which is evaporated from sugar can both can be condensed and again that is clean water you can readily reuse recycle it same way cooling water once it has become hot let it pass through cooling pond let the temperature come down and you can readily reuse once again for cooling purpose so this is very important steps and the industry can save huge amount of fresh water consumption by practicing reuse and recycling of all non process application of water okay second step installation of flow meter because we uh, we already are familiar with the process and know how much water is required for various step so installation of flow meter will immediately bring to attention whether consumption of water is as per requirement or somewhere water is wasted then minimize use of fresh water by using treated waste water wherever possible like for gardening for flushing of toilet and the fourth step very important that is by product recovery so let's look at which are the by product recover so i want you to pause the video 
and think what you can recover from waste of sugar industry. So, there are main four byproducts which can be recovered from sugar industry and these are bagas, press mud, molasses and fly ash. So, what is bagas? Bagas is the residue which remain once the sugar cane juices filter or extracted. So, the solid residue, fibrous residue, it has potential for utilization as fuel in sugar industry itself in the boiler. Then, if sugar industry is not functioning, even then the bagasse can be burned in boiler and used for electricity generation. Apart from that, bagasse is used for paper and cardboard production and it can be used as filler material along with press mud for composting. The second byproduct press mud, it is generated from filtration of the lime sludge. So, about 4 percent of crushed sugar cane is generated as press mud. The press mud can be used as soil conditioner and fertilizer. You can use it as filler material for composting along with biogas and the third use of press mud is as feed ingredient for cattle as well as poultry. Okay. The third byproduct it is fly ash and fly ash is produced from boiler. If bagasse is used as fuel, then the quantity of fly ash generated is very high. Now, this fly ash can be mixed with press mud and used as fertilizer. It can be used as raw material for manufacturing of cement or it can also be used as additive for brick manufacturing. The last fourth product that is molasses and it is nothing but the liquid which is like honey, very thick dark color syrup which remains after separation of sugar crystal and this molasses can be used for manufacturing of acetic acid, citric acid and vinegar. It can also be used for cattle feed. Then the main use is in distillery for manufacturing of ethanol or rectified spirit and the molasses can be used for ethanol production for ethanol blended petroleum. Okay. So, these are the various byproducts and they all are very useful. It is possible for industry to recover some of the cost by selling this byproducts. So, this is the end of lesson. 12. I hope you have understood the process and the treatment of wastewater from sugar industry and in the next lesson we will talk about distillery industry. Thanks everyone.